Hi besties and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be filming a video that I have been wanting to film for literally forever and that is reading booktubers favorite books. We do indeed have some pretty popular books in this video which many a booktuber loves so I'm hoping they're gonna live up to the hype. Plus some exciting news for this video is that it is actually in collaboration with Melanie Collis here on YouTube. She is gonna be filming a video in the exact same format. We are both gonna be reading booktubers favorite books and she is actually gonna be reading one of my favorite books. I have given Melody The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker to read. It's one of my all-time favorite books. I think it is so perfect and I'm seriously so excited to hear all of her thoughts and opinions on it. Now Melody is seriously just the loveliest person. She posts a lot of lifestyle content as well as reading vlogs and reading wrap ups and I'm, I'm just so excited to be doing this video with her because she's genuinely so lovely. So let's get into the books that I'm going to be reading in this video if you've not figured it out from the thumbnail. So Melody has actually given me Say You Swear by Megan Brandy to read. She gave me this book and I was a little bit apprehensive because if you're familiar with my channel you'll know that I have tried reading it Say You Swear previously. I've gotten about halfway through in the past and I actually DNF'd it but this video I'm calling it now is gonna be our redemption arc. This is mine and Say You Swear's second chance romance. Maybe maybe it was just right book wrong time. So I have indeed started it already and it's safe to say I'm enjoying it a lot more this time than I did the first time so that is very good news. The second book that I am gonna be picking up is another fan favorite and it is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one I know is widely loved in the book community Community, but specifically it is absolutely raved about by Destiny Sidwell and Sarah Caroli. And finally, how could we forget Miss Larry Reed and Steph Boro? It wouldn't be a booktuber's favourite books without these two girls. So I'm very excited to let you know that I'm going to be taking the leap into Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. But there we have the three books that I'm going to be reading in today's video. I'm so excited for all of them and I'm also very excited to tell you all of my thoughts and feelings about all of them. And if you do enjoy this video, please don't forget to like comment and subscribe because i would absolutely love to have you here and now let's get in to the reading vlog I figured it's probably about time I should actually update you on Daisy Jones and the Six given that I am halfway through. As you may have gathered, I caved and I bought the audiobook, but I wrangled it to be a little bit cheaper than I was originally expecting because I like renewed my Audible subscription and then spent a credit. First of all, the audiobook, they were not lying when they said it enhances the experience tenfold. I started just reading it without the audiobook and I was like, okay, fine. It sounds like a documentary that's been made recently, but like with all of the members of the band from the 70s. Like, I don't even know how to put into words how just incredible of an experience it is. But I recently watched on TV, I think it was like a Mushroom Records documentary or something, and it's giving me all those same vibes. And it's just, it's so cool. It's so so cool. I'm currently up to Aurora 1977 to 1978 part one. Four hours and 20 minutes into the audiobook and I'm 190 pages into the physical. The first thing that you guys may have noticed while I've been listening is I've been drawing Daisy Jones and it's because I really really struggle to actually focus on audiobooks when I'm busy doing something else. Like I will just block the noise out and I won't actually listen so I need to be like sitting still or like going for a walk and just like have nothing else going on. So I've been doing a bit of my Mind numbing drawing. My camera is picking it off as a face, so that is fantastic news. Yeah, I've been drawing her just for something to do while I'm listening, to be honest. So I'm hoping to finish that by the end of this video. Daisy is like, I don't even know how, to, I love her character, but I don't think I would like her as a person. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like she's so just unapologetically herself and she feels like such a well-rounded whole character. Like there is a reason behind and you can really understand why she is the way she is from her parents disregarding her and just taking no notice of her to her like growing up and I guess like developing this desire for recognition. And then as well with the insomnia when she was a child and her parents just ignoring it, it makes sense that she now has an addiction and a dependency to drugs and alcohol that sort of solve those problems for her. I just think it's written very well because you can really understand why Daisy wants to be who she wants to be and why she wants to be recognized for Daisy Jones and not 
for like anything else. So as I've been listening to the audiobook as well, I've only been listening to the songs as they get mentioned. So I've only listened so far to Honeycomb and Aurora because I'm halfway through the book. They're like just starting to write the album together, Daisy and the Six. I'm really looking forward to, I think she mentioned like a high and low breakfast or something. She orders coffee and champagne to, I guess, like depress her nervous system, but then like get it riled up again to just like make her feel better, I suppose. And I think her boyfriend at the time said something about writing it down for a lyric and a song. And she just kind of thought to herself, what makes you think I'm not going to use it? So I'm hopefully crossing all my fingers and toes. I'm hoping that's going to be a lyric in one of their songs on the album, because I would love to hear that brought to life. The six is also a very interesting dynamic. I am enjoying it, but I'm also like a little bit on edge because I can tell that Eddie and Pete are sort of like, they're being left out of all the decisions. Okay. They're not involved whatsoever. Eddie, especially is getting very irritated with that so I'm just kind of waiting for it to blow up in their faces and then also Billy and Camilla I adore them I love the way they met I think it's so cute that Camilla is just like head over heels for Billy and Billy the same where he's willing to sort of I guess sacrifice his rock star life not sacrifice feels like the wrong word but I feel like you're picking up what I'm putting down but yeah I love them as a couple I think they're really sweet I am a little bit scared <laughs> given Billy's I guess history with addiction and cheating. I'm a little bit concerned that being around Daisy with her ongoing addiction and just her kind of like carefree lifestyle, I'm scared that Billy is gonna like, I guess, relapse? I don't know. I'm scared he's gonna cheat on Camilla. I love that they're getting close and like discovering that they don't actually hate each other, but I'm also like, <laughs> I'm scared. Scared, please be loyal. Anyway, I'm gonna go keep listening to the audiobook and I'm going to hopefully finish that drawing. I have finished Daisy Jones and the Six. I feel so stupid crying. It was really good. It was really, really good. I didn't even know what to say. Like it was just so cool, I guess. And the whole experience was really cool listening to the audiobook and actually like, felt like you're really getting to know the characters. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. I did write myself some notes as I was listening to the second half of the book. <laughs> I wrote myself two things. The first thing I wrote is the fact that there is not a physical version of Impossible Woman should be a crime. I'm fairly certain there isn't, but I will be looking for it. The second thing that I wrote, which I, I sort of still stand by, but I also disagree with a little bit now, but I wrote that it felt a little bit pretentious, I guess, at the height of their career. Although, I did write this down. I, I said, although I suppose if you're gonna get to the top, you do need to be a little bit self-absorbed and a little bit pretentious. I think it did add to the story. I don't think that was a negative. I think that was just part of the whole journey. What the hell, you guys? <laughs> book was so good. I'm like so tempted to just go five star and be done with it but I think I'm gonna sit. Am I really not gonna give it a five star? <laughs> like the whole experience I think made it a five star of like listening to the songs as I read the book and actually getting to hear the characters and feel like so absorbed in their story that makes it a five star. I don't know that the story itself and if I were to just read the book without all of that additional extra things I don't know that it would be a five star but my experience it was really good. Sarah and Destiny. Mm -hmm. You guys recommended a good book. The next book that I'm gonna read, I've already started, is Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. Should I give you an update right now? I may as well, right? Let me go get it. Let me turn my light on as well so you can have <laughs> slightly better lighting. So Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. I'm, oh my God, I'm actually quite far into it. I'm 200, 200 pages exactly into it. I'm almost caught up to the part where I DNF'd it last time. This time around, I'm enjoying it a lot more. Very pleased to say. 
I'm actually quite enjoying it now. Noah is like, oh, it's a bit of a strange one. So all of the characters, Ariana is not nearly as annoying as I found. She wasn't the first time that I read it. I'm actually like not minding her character character. Cameron is a little bit annoying but she's also like a really good friend to her so it's like it's just not similar to my personality or my friends around me so it's just a bit like I don't know if I'm articulating myself very well but it's just new and I'm not minding it. I should probably tell you about the book if you've not read it. So Say You Swear is a brother's best friend's romance. The first sort of chunk of the book takes place during the summer before the characters start college. So Ariana who is our main male character, main male character, <laughs> Ariana who is our main female character and her best friend Cameron as well as Ariana's brother Mason and Mason's two best friends Chase and Brady. The five of them go to their family's beach house. The family has sort of like gifted the beach house to them to sort of keep them together and uh, just like give them a place of refuge for the rest of their life basically. So they are this big friend group of five and they're all really close. My voice is still wobbly from crying. <laughs> And so within that friendship group, Ariana has quite a big crush on Chase. Crush sounds like such a juvenile word to be using, but crush. And she is like desperate for something to happen between them during the summer and Chase. Chase is quite standoffish. I think he has feelings for Ariana, but he's also like scared of her brother because her brother is so overprotective. And that's one thing I don't like about this book. It has settled down now that I'm 200 pages in, but, but for that first chunk, Mason is just so annoying. He's so so overprotective and it's just like almost it's overbearing and it's just like dude take a step back take a chill pill that's how i feel about the first chunk which honestly i still didn't really like that first chunk but i'm past it now i'm actually in and amongst noah and they're at college now and i'm enjoying it a lot more noah is like such a big sweetie pie but i'm a little bit conflicted with him like i understand why people are in love with him and just adore him because he is seriously just the cutest he's so sweet he's so lovely he's so respectful of ariana the two of them just click like right away and i get that and i see that but I'm at this stage I'm not in love with him because I would like some more character depth like so far he's just the nice guy who bought her coffee and some Panadol after they went out the night before you know and she's hungover there's nothing really beyond his character to just being the nice guy so I'm waiting for a little bit more character development on him which is fine we've only had him in the book again for like 50 pages so <laughs> that's not an issue I'm definitely looking forward to continue reading it I did I like even give you a good plot summary then? I'm not sure. But the five of them head off to college, all the guys on the football team. So they kind of know Noah and Mason is like sort of chill with Noah, which I actually quite appreciate. And there's a weird dynamic between Chase and Ariana because Chase took Ariana's virginity uh, later into the summer and Ariana kind of freaked out and went home and was just like, screw you, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> they had this moment and then Chase was just kind of like, real standoffish again. So she got the ick basically and went home and was like, I'm not dealing with this. And she's just been a little bit of a heartbroken girly. But Noah, bless him, bless his cotton socks, is slowly mending that heart. I really wish in college romances that the authors would actually give degrees, degrees? They would actually tell you what the characters are studying <laughs> because I know Cameron is doing like early childhood development or something, but what are the rest of them doing? Maybe it's just because I'm in university and I like knowing what people are studying, but I wish the authors would tell us what the characters are studying because usually nine times out of 10 in most college romances, they don't and I'm curious. So yeah, I think that's sort of all I have to update you on. I can't believe Daisy, Daisy Jones is over. I think my favorite song so far off the album is The River. The Rivers, I listened to it with one of my friends the other day because she was like, this one, this one bangs and I can confirm that one is a banger. But yeah, I'm gonna go keep reading this book. Hopefully it continues to improve. is happening right now. What? <laughs> oh my god. I feel like that was so left field. Okay. It does indeed have a little kick to it. Oh, I have to give a proper update. Sorry, I don't, I'm not loving it. But Noah, my heart is actually breaking for him. Noah is like the only character that I genuinely really care about. I just touched something on my camera and I don't know if the settings are still fine, but we're gonna hope that they are. But I finished Say You Swear. Um, <laughs> I have some very mixed feelings 
on this book. The first time that I picked Say You Swear Up and read like 200 pages of it, it was okay, but I didn't really like the writing style. I wasn't really obsessed with any of the characters. I knew Noah had potential, but I didn't, I wasn't really interested in like finding out about that potential. So being forced to sit down and read it for this video, I think did improve my opinions on the book. I <laughs> honestly had a bad taste left in my mouth. For not really a valid reason. Like I just didn't really like the writing style and I don't think it was the right time for me to read this book. But I can say that my opinions have definitely improved on it. I still am not obsessed with it. That's such a controversial take and I feel so bad saying it. Melody, I love you. I think this book is a really, really good recommendation. I'm just like so sensitive to writing style and I think my like critique that sums up all of the issues that I have, have with this book is that it's overwritten. Like there's just so much writing and just like internal feeling. And I think it could be done with a little bit more finesse and maybe it just, this is the, this is the self-published version. Maybe the published version now is like written a little bit better, but <laughs> my like other takeaway from this book is that I absolutely agree. Noah Riley is like the best book boyfriend ever. That man, literally an angel sent from heaven. I'm obsessed with him. I adore him so, so much. I can't remember if I said in my first little update, but I wasn't like obsessed with any of the characters. Um, however, Ariana definitely did grow on me. She definitely sort of like grew into herself. She definitely matured over the span of the book, which I really, really enjoyed watching. The like first half of this book is not my favorite. Like I didn't really care for them being at the beach house, but the second half, it was just blow after blow. Like, oh my God. Those poor characters. Poor Noah. My heart was like actually breaking for him while reading this book. Like Noah is the epitome of the perfect man. And to see him go through all of that and to be in his perspective for all of that. Stop it. Stop it. I understand why people find this book heartbreaking now. However, the one like shock value heartbreaking moment. I saw that coming from the beginning of the book. And if you read this book, I think you know what I'm getting at. But it was just like fine one chapter and the next chapter was just like sobbing bawling my eyes out. Um, that bit got me. It really got me. It hit me. She bailed me up in a corner and said, girl, you've not cried in a hot minute. It's about time. Um, so yeah, this book did get me. I can confirm it got me. Wrap up like everything that I just said. I can confidently say the last 30 to 40% of the book was actually quite good. It was very angsty, very like tear jerking, very emotionally impactful. Like I definitely understand why. Oh my God. I really understand why Megan Brandy makes you go through that whole first half of the book and like experience their rela Ariana's relationship with Chase and like stop it. Stop it. I really understand why she puts you through that torment now and it does pay off. I got very, very frustrated, but I, but I think that's just representative of her being a decent storyteller. Um, I got to the point where I was like, I really just want to kick Chase off a cliff. Like, oh girl. Okay, let's actually focus on my notes now. So I need a family trait is my main point. I need a family trait at the beginning of this book because I wanted to root for Mason and Peyton so bad, but I was like, are you guys cousins? <laughs> It's mentioned like once at the very beginning of the book, their like relationship to each other. And my pea brain, I can't remember that. I will not remember that. So a family tree would have been nice or just like a reaffirmation that they're not related <laughs> would have been cool. And now my final point, I think is the main one that I don't want to tear this book to shreds. Like it really wasn't that bad. I loved Noah, but I just think we all have different reading tastes and that's perfectly fine. And I just want to be honest about this book. So my main point is the writing. I can't hack it. I don't think like it got, it improved a little bit towards the end of the book, but it's just not my favorite sort of style. It's very wordy. I hate being a little negative Nelly, but all in all, I think I would give Say You Swear three stars. That end really pulled it together for me. That like twist. And one of my friends on Instagram, she really scared me because they have this whole Romeo and Juliet thing going on, like their nicknames. And I was like, I thought they were going to like each die or something. <laughs> So that really scared me. That scared me. Um, my heart dropped. It sank, but I can confirm it is a happy ending. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I have such mixed feelings on this book. I think I'm going to settle on a three star. It's probably like a, what even is it on my spice scale? Maybe a 1.5. There was like two scenes, I think. Two, two and a half. Anyway, yeah, I don't even, I've got such mixed feelings and I feel like I can't give you a concise, I go, I bang on about wanting a concise book, but I can't even make a concise review. If you're interested in reading this book, I would still definitely say check it out because she takes you on a roller coaster of emotions, let me tell you. Yeah, if you're interested, I definitely say read it, but it wasn't my favorite.
which I feel so bad saying. Melody has been eating up The Simple Wild, which is the book that I gave her. And she's like messaging me with these updates and I'm like, oh girl, oh girl, I'm so excited for you. Let's, let me give you a very quick update because I'm currently reading the very final book of this video. I'm currently reading Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I'm 70 pages in, I'm at chapter seven. I really, really need to try and finish it either this afternoon or tomorrow. But so far I'm actually quite enjoying it. This is the sort of writing style that I like. Like going from Say You Swear into Addicted to you this feels very this feels much more polished I would say I'm almost surprised that I like it because I spent so long thinking I wouldn't really like the addicted series I didn't think the characters would be for me I don't love the like elite socialite kind of sphere in books so I'm shocked that I like this book I just think Lily and Lo are such unlikable characters but they're so realistically flawed that it's like I can't hate you but so far I'm really enjoying it. I think it's interesting to have a bit of insight into addiction. I'm not sure how much of an accurate portrayal it does make, but so far I'm really actually quite enjoying it. Like I'm having a good time. I am having a good time. I can appreciate the build up that this book is giving to Lily and Lo because I know their story is like five books. I want to say. And yeah, I am a little bit mad at myself that I gave away Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower, but I think I only gave them to my sister. So I might see if she still has them, but I'm like, I kind of want to read this series now, you guys. I'm not going to lie. My thoughts might change by the end of it, but I'm very interested in reading the rest of the series, which I feel like a lot of you are going to be very, very happy about. Yeah, I'm going to go keep reading this book. And yeah, I feel so bad about giving a... A scathing review to be to say you swear to be honest but it did have good moments like I really really liked Ariana's character development I really liked her and Cameron's um friendship by the end of it Cameron that girl is a real one I actually really like her and I'm very much intrigued by Cameron and Trey's relationship as well I don't know if they're gonna get a book or if they have a book I want a book for them and I also I think I am gonna pick up Peyton and Mason's book which is the next one coming in that series I think I am gonna pick it up I'm gonna be brave I'm gonna put on my big girl pants just want to learn more about Peyton's backstory and I think Mason is an interesting character. He definitely like dropped the overprotective act um, by the end of the book, especially towards Noah, which I did like. I appreciated because that was one of the main things uh, at the beginning that I didn't like about him and Chase. I just feel bad for giving it a bad review, but like I still gave it three stars. Like I still somewhat enjoyed it. I'm just like not the biggest fan and that's okay. And I need to be okay with that. Okay, I need to stop talking. I need to get out of the house actually. Thank you guys for watching. No, I'm not finishing this video right now. This is a vlog. Oh my god. See you guys in my next update. Tell me why I'm giddy over Connor right now. Oh my god, I did not foresee this happening. I kind of love Connor and he has a cat. I take back everything I just said about Connor. He, not very nice. <laughs> little bit conceited, little bit conservative. Was not expecting that from him. Um, Rose is going to have a field day putting him in his place. That's all I'm going to say. I also realised I... <laughs> oh my god, why do I look like this? I also realised I need to give you actually like an update to tell you what the book is about but I'm gonna do that when I update you next because literally just got a text from the hospital that's doing my septoplasty tomorrow saying that I will be admitted at 9 a.m so I need to finish this book tonight because I'm not gonna be in any state to vlog so we're on a grind how much have I got left I've got four and a half hours left it's three o'clock please pray for me <laughs> okay this is such a niche statement to make but I feel like I need to say it. So you guys know that one girl who like blew up on TikTok for her crazy study ethic and like sessions and she would like wake up at 2 a.m., hit the gym, then go to the library and like eat liver and like drink, I don't know, cow spot or something. It, it was wild, okay? Connor reminds me of <laughs> Lowe's just told Connor a little lie about why Lily needed to be excused for studying for a second. He must have blamed her on indigestion or something. So Connor was like, oh, I should have bought some anti-acids. And, and the fact that Connor's tutoring session methods, se tutoring methods involve cycles between caffeine and anti-acids is mildly disconcerting. <laughs> It also reminds me of that one dental student girl. She pulls all-nighters and drinks like so much Red Bull and coffee. I wanted to get that off my chest. Connor reminds me of those two and kind of love it, kind of don't. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about him. He's like so... I like him more than low, but some of the stuff he says, it's like, get off your high horse. I don't know how to feel.
I don't know how to feel. But he's definitely made the book a lot more fun, I'm not gonna lie. I finished it! It's still the same day. I did somehow manage to achieve my goal of finishing this this afternoon. Oh my god, I've read it that much today. How good is that? How good is that? I have... <laughs> And this may give you an inclination, inclination and inkling of how much I enjoyed this book. I've already downloaded a Ricochet on my Kindle. First of all, Crystal and Becca Ritchie having the entire Addicted Calloway series on Kindle Unlimited despite it being traditionally published. You guys are like my favorite new authors. Okay, so Addicted to You. Oh girl, oh girl, where do I? Let me give you a plot summary. Essentially the entire plot of Addicted to You Essentially, the entire plot of Addicted to You follows Lily and Lo. Now, the two of them have been childhood best friends. They are each other's ride or die. They would die for each other, quite literally. And the two of them, as the title would suggest, both have addictions. So, Lo is an alcoholic and Lily has an addiction to sex. Now both of these addictions are obviously quite disruptive to their lives and to sort of like cover their tracks to sort of disguise their, there's a word but it's not coming to me, to sort of disguise their activities shall we say. They pretend to fake day and they even do it for their family, like even their family doesn't know that they're not a real couple. This book was basically the two of them hitting rock bottom and then all of their lies and all of their secrets being unraveled. It was honestly really, I don't want to describe it as entertaining because I don't want to say that I found these two fictional characters addictions entertaining but how do I articulate this eloquently? I had a good time reading it. I think Krista and Becca Ritchie are pretty good storytellers to be honest. I really like their writing style and to be quite honest I'm not like the biggest fan of Lily or Lo. I know I said earlier that their flaws make you want to dislike them but like they're so realistic that you just can't. I still stand by that but I also, Lo is just like so, so hot and cold and it's like I know that's probably stemming from his addiction and again I haven't had time to look into if the addictions in this book are accurately portrayed but if you've got any sort of triggers or if you're curious to look into it yourself I'd say definitely do that. It is quite detailed and I definitely think it could be triggering if you have experience with addiction in your life but overall I really did enjoy reading this book. I think I'm going to settle on giving it a four star. I think I mean, there's, there was nothing wrong with it. I'm just like not utterly obsessed. However, as I said before, I am going to be continuing the series. I've heard Ricochet is like the worst book in the series. Apparently like not much happens in it or something, which I can see how, like just from the way this one ended, I can see why Ricochet doesn't have a lot going on. But I'm still interested to keep reading. I really want to see Lily and Lo get the happy ending. And to be perfectly honest, I really just want to get to the Calloway Sisters books. I'm really, really intrigued by Rose and Connor's story because they're these like academic rivals to love and I just, we see them in Addicted to You and I don't know if the Callaway Sisters uh, series, like Kiss This Guy is gonna jump back in time so we actually see their relationship starting. But I'm just so intrigued by their relationship because I love the sort of like intellectual banter that goes on be between the two of them. And I also know that Rike and Daisy are gonna end up together. I really like Rike, I'm not even gonna lie. I think he's just like a really solid dude. I know that like when he meets Daisy, she's underage and I don't know if that's gonna be an issue later in the books. I know some people bring it up as like a critique for the series, but I think I'm just gonna have to read the books and like make my own decision, I guess. I don't know, I just hope everything happens once she's over 18, you know. And I really like this book. If you've not read it, I'd definitely recommend it. Check your trigger warnings because there is obviously some addiction there is also some sexual assault in this book so just be aware yeah i i really liked it i really liked it i really liked it i wasn't expecting to like i was expecting to go into it and like not really have an opinion on it but i enjoy reading it maybe i need to maybe i'm being reformed maybe i need to like change my opinion on elite socialite sort of books because i really liked it and i like the fact that they're rich so to sort of wrap this entire video up i'm gonna give you a quick little recap on everything because why the hell not first up we read daisy jones and the six which was a recommendation from sarah and destiny and this one is absolutely worth your time i loved it i settled on a five star because I couldn't not give it a five star. I adored this book so, so much. Then I read Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. I've sat with this book a little bit more and I think I 
do actually like it. I'm still not in love with it. I don't know if I'll read anything else by Megan Brandy because I don't love her writing style. But I think the second half of the book and Noah really redeemed it for me. I still would honestly probably recommend it if you're interested in reading it. I wouldn't recommend it to someone who hasn't maybe heard about the book before. But if you're interested, I definitely recommend it. And this again is one of Melody's favorite books. So if you love Say You Swear, I definitely suggest going over and checking out her channel. Maybe getting some recommendations for her because obviously you guys' tastes are line. Then I just finished Addicted to You. Sorry, I look kind of greasy, hey? Sorry about that. I really need to wash my hair tonight. It's been a long day. Gave it four stars. I don't know that I have much else to give you a review on about it other than the fact that it was good. Like it had solid writing, solid characters. I really appreciate how flawed the characters are and I love, love the themes of friendship that happened in this book and Rose. Oh my god. Just friendship and family I feel like is the main takeaways from this book. The main themes of this book and just how important good friends are I suppose so that was really really nice to see in this one I think that was probably my favorite part and of course this was a fantastic recommendation from Steph and Larry and I would also recommend it okay there we have the three books that I've read in this video I'm so honestly glad that this vlog is over because I've been filming this for like two months I think it's taken me a hot second to get this video done but honestly I had a pretty good time let me know if you guys want to see this sort of video again because obviously there is a plethora of booktubers out there with favorite books so I promise next time it won't take two months to film <laughs> but yeah I had a really good time I've found a new favorite series that I am gonna binge and I've also found a new favorite book and I'm so so glad that I can finally understand the Noah Riley hype and yeah thank you guys so so much for watching if you did enjoy this video don't forget to go and check out Melody's video as well. She did something in the exact same format and she read The Simple Wild which was my recommendation to her. I love that book so so much. I'm really really excited to watch her vlog because I know she's gonna blow her eyes out <laughs> and I can't wait because me too. Anyway thank you guys so so much for watching it once again. If you did enjoy this video please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because I would absolutely love to have you here. If you want to follow me on Instagram or check out my good reads they're always linked in the description so you can see what I'm reading. Hit me up, talk about your favorite books with me. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching for the third time. And I am going to go have a shower and get ready to go into surgery tomorrow. I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. And yeah, bye.